Well, hello, children. Y'all know that I'll do shameful things for best millimeter. So, of course, you knew I was going to do this. Today's test is 10 millimeter Underwood 165 grain gold dot, but I'm going to shoot it from a 10 and a quarter inch barrel. I believe the 165 grain gold dot to be the tippy top best bullet for defense in best millimeter. It is a bonded bullet that makes use of a very tough lead alloy. Okay, technically it isn't bonded, but it's plated. Chemically and physically speaking, the result is the same. A copper jacketed bullet with a lead core chemically attached to the jacket, so the performance is the same as a bonded bullet. But yeah, it's technically not bonded. We've seen the gold dot do some pretty amazing stuff in other tests, so I'm pretty confident that we'll see good results here too. But I was wrong once. I suppose it could happen again. You know that Underwood has a reputation for filling their ammo chock full of ludicrous speed, and on top of that, we'll be shooting it from a longer barrel than usual, so I wouldn't be surprised if we tear open a portal to the upside down. Let's get out to the range and shoot Underwood 165 grain gold dot from a 10 and a quarter inch TNW survival pistol into clear gel. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNBC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. All right, dudes, <laughs> that was really impressive. The temporary stretch cavity that you saw on the high speed was insane. Granted, this is only a pistol bullet. Pistols are pistols and rifles are rifles, but that barrel's twice as long as a regular pistol barrel, and it produced some pretty serious velocities. Of course, you've got to push a gold dot stupid fast to get it to fragment. Gold dots are very, very tough bullets. Bear in mind, fragmentation in a pistol bullet isn't necessarily a good thing. While it is usually a good thing for a rifle bullet, fragmentation in a pistol bullet generally doesn't add much to wounding because the fragments usually stay fairly close to the main track and fragmentation in a pistol bullet reduces the mass of the bullet which tends to reduce the penetration. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing either so long as the bullet penetrates adequately and as you can see here it did. This is a 16 inch block. It's obviously over the 12 inch minimum. Let's get some measurements off of this. Total penetration is 14.4 inches. The neck is essentially non-existent. Now normally we wouldn't bother with temporary stretch cavity on a pistol bullet, but this is kind of crossing that line. Yeah, it's not very close to the 2,000 foot per second rule of thumb minimum, but you saw that the temporary stretch cavity on high speed was pretty big. So let's measure the disturbance in the gel. 5.5 inches by 2.5 inches. So not exactly 5.56 five, rifle TSC, but still pretty respectable for a pistol. This is legit. Let's take a look at the bullet. Okay, no surprises here. Obviously, big, fat expansion. Nice, round, uniform expansion. Looks like only one of the pedals really fully stayed on there. Let's get a little closer look at it, see if I can get this camera to focus for you. The eponymous gold dot in the middle. Okay, 
so this is just a ball of contradictions. On one hand, it's moving pretty fast for a pistol bullet, and obviously well beyond the intended velocity based on the appearance of the recovered bullets. On the other hand, not nearly as much boost in velocity as I'd hoped for a 10 plus inch barrel. Underwood is probably using a relatively fast powder in this, which is probably using up most of the zoom zoom juice in the first four or five inches of pistol barrels. And that makes sense. Most people won't be shooting this from anything longer than about five inches. On the high speed, we saw a big chunk in TSC, or at least for a pistol bullet, though not exactly intermediate rifle territory. There was a great deal of fragmentation, which is normally not ideal for a pistol load but these fragments came way off the primary track and would have caused significant bleeding distal to the main wound channel at the very least. If the temporary stretch cavity was large enough, fragments like that can encourage stretched tissues to begin tearing, and of course, the penetration was absolutely perfect. Dead on that 14 to 16 inch sweet spot. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this for defensive use from a carbine or long pistol. It nailed all the important metrics, even if it did it in a weird, I gotta be me kind of way. What do you think? Can you name some better millimeters? Besides 10, I'm pretty fond of 81 and 40. What millimeters do you like? I hope you found this video informative or at the very least entertaining. If you think I've earned it, please help support our channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And that's not just some garbage that YouTubers say at the end of videos. All of those sort of actions are forms of engagement that drive the decisions that are made by the algorithm that decides what YouTube thinks you like. And because subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore, make sure you click that bell icon down below so you can actually get a notification when we post a new video. If you'd like to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera just like the one that I used to capture this video, contact AIMED Research. Their contact info is in the doobly-doo.